Hello there, my name is Google Professor, and without further ado, let's get straight into the video. The Ponzi scheme fraudster who stole money to freeze his wife. While in Shay told investors he was putting their money in commodities, foreign exchange trading pools and precious metals, but instead used over $150,000 of it on cryogenics after his wife's death in 2009. While Che's account of his dealing isn't yet known, prosecutors say the 38-year-old fled New York for Peru while under investigation in 2011, and they have been unable to locate him since. Neither he nor any lawyer presenting him responded to a related civil suit that the Federal Commodities Futures Trading Commission filed against him last year. Che solicited more than $5 million from people for investment pools, promising returns around 24% a year and telling them there was no risk in this activity, prosecutors said. However, he lost over $2 million of the investors' money and used much of the rest for personal expenses. One investor noticed Che drove a different luxury car virtually every time they met, and of course his wife's preservation. The heartbroken widow who wants to be cryogenically preserved to reunite with her frozen husband. Bridgetown residents Smart and Helmer Sandberg had always enjoyed life, but when Helmer passed away from a brain tumor in 1984, it was his wish not to be cremated, but the complete opposite. For about $200,000, the former US Marine has been cryogenically frozen and awaits at the Detroit based Cryonex Institute for the time when a human body can be brought back to life. Miss Sandberg has also made the decision to come back by being cryogenically frozen when she dies. I still miss Helmer, she said. I still love him. We were together for more than 20 years, and they were years of joint contentment. Miss Sandberg said she hoped both she and Helmer could be revived together. However, they haven't stipulated this as a condition. The three academics at Oxford University who are paying to be cryogenically preserved. The belief that death is the only certainty in life is a concept that senior academic staff members at Oxford University Institute are hoping to dismantle by paying to be cryogenically preserved and brought back to life in the future. Nick Bostrom, professor of philosophy at the Future of Humanity Institute, and his co-researcher Andrew Sandberg have agreed to pay an American company to detach and defreeze their heads in the event of their deaths. Colleague Stuart Armstrong also wants to be preserved cryogenically, but is opting to have his whole body frozen. All of them are lead researchers at FHI, which is a part of the prestigious Oxford Martin School where academics research problems affecting the globe, such as climate change. When they are considered terminally ill, a cryopreservation team will wait nearby for a doctor to pronounce them dead. A machine will then be used to keep blood pumping while the body is cooled. The bloodstream will be infused with preservatives and antifreeze to protect tissues. If only the head is being frozen, it will be detached from the body before nitrogen gas is used to reduce its temperature to minus 124 degrees Celsius. The patient is finally cooled to almost minus 200 degrees Celsius before being placed in a vat of liquid nitrogen for storage at a cryogenic preservation facility. The baseball legend who was cryogenically frozen after a legal battle. When Boston Red Sox legend Ted Williams passed away at the age of 83 in July of 2002, his body was flown from his home of Everdance, Florida, to a center in Arizona where he was cryogenically frozen so that he could be brought back to life in the future. Though his will stated his desire to be cremated and his ashes scattered at the Florida Keys, Williams' son John Henry chose to have his remains frozen. Ted's elder daughter, Bobby Jo Farrell, sued to have her father's wishes recognized. John Henry's lawyer then produced an informal family pact signed by Ted, Claudia and John Henry, in which they agreed to be put into by stasis after they died so they would be together in the future even if it's only chance. Bobby Joe and her attorney, Spike Fitzpatrick, contended that the family pact, which was scribbled on an ink-stained napkin, was forged. However, laboratory analysis proved that the signature was indeed genuine. John Henry said that his father was a believer in science and was willing to try cryonics if it held the possibility of reuniting the family. John Henry died of leukemia on March 6 of 2004. He held up his end of napkin pact and joined his dad at Elko in Scottsdale, Arizona. The first person to be successfully cryogenically frozen. It is generally accepted that the first person frozen with intent of future resuscitation was 73-year-old psychology professor James Bedford. He was preserved under crude conditions by Cryonic Society of California on January 12 of 1976. Bedford's body was maintained in liquid nitrogen by his family in Southern California until 1982, when it was then moved to Elker Life Extension Foundation and has remained in their care to the present day. The Bitcoin pioneer who was cryogenically frozen after losing his battle with ALS. In 2014, Bitcoin pioneer Hal Finney, widely accredited as the number two developer behind Satoshi Nakamoto on the world's most valuable cryptocurrency, passed away following a five-year battle with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis at the age of 58. Before his death, he requested that his body be frozen and stored with alcohol. His body is now preserved in a 10-foot tall tank filled with 450 liters of liquid nitrogen, with all of his blood and additional bodily fluids removed. 
Don't forget to press the subscribe button and rate this video. See you tomorrow, bye!